everyone, and welcome to this Thursday's Global Industry Spotlight. My name is Daniel Crane, and I am the Program Director for the Center for Creative Entrepreneurship. Here at the Center, we are building resources for creative entrepreneurs by providing online learning tools, networks, and insight into kind of what's happening in the creative industries. Every Thursday, we talk with different organizations, entrepreneurs, and you know people who are building communities. Um, and you know it's been it's been wonderful. Right now, currently, I'm at South by Southwest in Austin, Texas, and just learning about you know where the industry is going. I've been to some great workshops on cryptocurrency, obviously NFTs, um, you know, the metaverse, saw amazing music. And, you know, it, it's it's been really wonderful to connect internationally with a lot of different people who are building things in Finland and in Chile and, and just learning about how, you know, public, private, you know, are supporting um, these sectors. But that being said, um, I'm excited about our guest today. Uh, she is a 2112 member and a good friend of all of ours. Um, Mary Landaverde started, and she's the CEO of Industry. Uh, Industry is a new generation digital entertainment, TV, and live stream network that focuses on discovering and developing emerging artists in TV, film, and music. As a true pro artist network, Industry is where brands and content creators collaborate to bring impactful stories to life through innovative premium branded entertainment. So let's bring Mary in and hear about what she's doing. Hi, Mary. Hi, Daniel. How are you? I'm good. Yeah. Um, thanks for taking the time to to chat with us today. You know, industry from you know what I've known about it for the last you know almost year and a half is just very dynamic. There's a lot of interesting things that you guys are focusing on with with how to um, how to use content, how to brand content. Um, and 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 connect it with artists and and um, so can you talk just though before we get started about industry just a little bit about your background and your journey up until this point. Sure. Yeah, it's interesting how I got here. <laughs> um, I've <laughs> been in the industry for about twenty five years in brand strategy and marketing and licensing. Um, so I ran licensing for many of the um, biggest global brands. Um, I was with Miss America. Um, I worked with um, Sharper Image. I uh, worked with, um, you know, worked with the Bob Marley brand and a couple of other celebrity brands. Um, and mostly in marketing and licensing and creating um, licensing opportunities for their IP and um, creating merchandise around it and then bringing them into retail um, for monetization. So um, it really kind of helped, you know, little did I know that the industry, I-N-D-U, S-T-R-Y, <laughs> was going to kind of converge with technology and digital space. And here we are. So it really helps yeah. set the stage for what I'm doing now. Yeah. And, you know, so talk, can you talk a little bit about, so, you know, you were focusing on IP and now we're kind of in this new new age of of you know digital content and marketing what's what's the landscape you know now from your standpoint from my standpoint i think that brands throughout the last 10 years we've seen a trajectory of of, of brands coming into the video space um they are looking for new ways to advertise they're looking for new ways to reach an audience um as digital has trans you know has has moved into or, or has entertainment and brands moved into the digital space. And now, you know, with a lot of content creators and influencer creating their own content, these are, this is the audience that they're trying to reach. Um, right. And with the shift in streaming um, and how cable has also that audience shifted into digital streaming, a lot of the brands, you know, started shifting their advertising dollars into this space as well. Um, with audiences skipping advertising across different platforms, um, they needed to find new ways to not only engage with an audience, but find new ways to kind of measure um, their advertising dollars and their marketing oh, dollars. This is this is so pertinent. So I, I listened to a talk yesterday um, with the chief marketing officer of MasterCard, okay. and he talked a lot about uh, quantum marketing, um, which is a concept that he came up with. Uh, but But he was saying the same thing that, you know, advertisers are paying tons of money to put ads in YouTube and all these kinds of things and everyone skips them. They're not effective. 
um, you know, they're, they're not engaging, uh, you know, the audience in the right way and, th and that there needs to be, you know, new and different approaches to this. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and that's what industry. So four years ago, when my co-founder um, and I sat together and created industry, we built, a, you know, and that was when the Netflixes of the world and Amazon started creating, you know, all these amazing mega streaming platforms. We're not. Our background's not in entertainment. Uh, our co my co-founder is from Wall Street, and I'm on the mm -hmm. brands world. But we created industry from the lens of a marketer, um, because right. we saw the future of you know how do we how do we get the brands what they need? How do we get audiences new, fresh entertain entertainment content that they wanted to watch? How do we bridge that gap? How do we you know make it mutually beneficial for all of these you know pieces in this? ecosystem and an industry was found a way to be able to um, create a channel a platform where we are able to create storytelling and content um, discover new talent and bring these um, you know independent and emerging creators artists and TV film and music to come together and collaborate with the brands and what the brands get is the ability to be basically spoon fed all of these ideas and create uh, collaborate with these creators and that becomes they're advertising because then we're interactive. So it's it's product placement to a whole new level. They're able to place their products within the storytelling of that content. Um, mm. and then the technology allows audiences to watch a piece of content and then either click a hotspot or, or flash their phone um, across the TV screen um, on a QR code and get directed to that brand's e-commerce website to purchase an item, for example, what they're watching on screen. So it's a whole nother, um, it's a whole, you know, um, seamless way to advertise for the brands. Right, that, that was the word uh, frictionless. Like yes. What, uh, the, <laughs> the, the guy from MasterCard was talking about how the, the, the journey of the consumer, you want it to be frictionless. Yes. Um, so, so you're shooting content the content will have uh, a brand in it. Um, and yeah. then the consumer uh, will be able to, you know, let's say that someone has a really cool jacket on or they're wearing these sunglasses or, you know, there's a, you know, a new uh, DJ table or, or whatever it may be. Yeah. The, the consumer of this will be able to connect with that brand's website or, or, you know, find how to purchase that. Exactly. Item. Yeah, yeah. And we do it in a way seamlessly frictionless where it's very authentic. So we pair brands with the content creators or store, you know, the producers of the, the shows, the, the videos, the films even um, that make sense. Um, so it does not look like an ad. Um, and then on the back end, we have all the data analytics. We can measure where that click or that engagement happened during the video. We can see what device they use, we can see what part of the world they're in, we can see their demographics, we can see what kind of other content on the channel they're watching so that if, for example, MasterCard wanted to sponsor other like content and be integrated, it's branded integration is basically what it is. Um, mm -hmm. It gives them those opportunities. And in the nice thing is I always tell brands is if you're gonna spend money on your advertising, you can la literally recoup that in sales. So now part of your ad spend is, you know, is measurable and which is another right. thing um, that, that brands are struggling with is how do I measure the success of my ads? Um, right. So that is da that's data that we can provide them. Yeah. You know, I'm going to keep going back to this talk. Uh, he talked about how, you know, it, he was he's been, you know, with major credit cards for a while, but how they would send out uh, mailers um, and only I think. 0.4% of the people would sign up for MasterCards <laughs> with oh, the mailers, you know, and so they were losing 99.6%, right? So that's like, you know, that kind of mentality is insane. That doesn't, that that's, that's doesn't work, right? Um, and, and what you're talking about is exactly what he was saying is, is a full integrative kind of, you know, marketing um, with brands. And also, you know, what you said in terms of curating 
you know, whoever the, the story is, the performance is that connects with the brand, right? It, yeah. it has to, there has to be a connection that like, you know, you can be watching, you know, an interesting video on YouTube and something pops up that's so irrelevant to my exactly. interests. Yeah. That there's just, there, there's no connection. And I'm, I'm like just waiting for the countdown when I can skip. And it's obtrusive. Um, and I think this generation, especially post pandemic, and I don't know if you've sat in on some of these conversations at South by, but you know, the world has changed. Mm -hmm. We are much more of a community than, than ever before. Mm -hmm. um, at industry, we are discovering new talent and empowering creators to create stories, music, you know, that are meaningful. Um, and, and we always say that it's the audiences that really dictate they have the power and it's the creators that have the power, the artists that are creating entertainment that we consume every single day. Um, we are probably sitting at one of the wealthiest industries in the world. And yet, with all due respect to a lot of the bigger platforms, we kind of shift, we change the whole industry. Our model is upside down. We don't sit in a boardroom and decide what content to deliver. We mm. actually allow our audiences, fans, the, the fans of the artists, the fans, the audiences, the consumers tell us what they want to watch. And that's when we take that data and we deliver it to the brands. Um, and, and that is where the, the magic happens because what yeah. you're now delivering, their favorite brands, their favorite music, their favorite stories, it's building a community and the ecosystem is a machine that works, you know, constantly. And it's a communication, it's really democratizing entertainment as we see it. And so, you know, let's just take an example. Do you start, so do you start with, if you're gonna put a piece of content into the uh, the streaming service um, or the streaming network? Yeah. Uh, is the the content already created or are you helping create it? And then what's the journey from like, you know, let's say, you know, I'm a, I'm a creator and I just made a really cool documentary that's 10 minutes long. I think it has, you know, some legs. Um, you know, how can I, uh, how does industry help me, you know, put that content up and connect with brands and, and kind of what's the journey from a, a, a creative standpoint? We do both. Um, finished mm -hmm. content, uh, finished content, we're always, you know, we'll license in. Um, and we'll take and we'll help you monetize on, on it on the platform or on the channel. Yeah. Um, new concepts um, are, there is a curation process and sometimes we're in conversations with brands. We'll be talking to a brand that says, you know what, I'm, here's a car brand. Uh, I'm looking to engage a millennial audience. We're kind of a, you know, we're trying to get into them, uh, into this, into this uh, demographic. We've been sponsoring music festivals it's not working we're doing so we, <laughs> how, what what can you what can you come up with in terms of a of a show or um you know a series that makes sense that we can sponsor and we can reach this audience then we will look at our talent pool we'll look at our production companies the producers our partners creators and we'll look for the right people to bring um you know ideas in front of a brand um, or it could be from that's coming from the brand side. Sometimes we'll yeah. have producers and filmmakers that'll have a short film that um, they've either run through the film festivals and or they have um, run it as a as a web series on YouTube or online and it's created a fan base, but they just want to um, bring it to the forefront and, 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 and create a full season show. Um, we're always scouting. We'll take those ideas. We'll work with those producers. We'll create the pitch decks because I'm from the brand's world. I speak their right. language. I know what they're going to be looking for. I know how much money they're going to want to spend. And, and I want to, and I'll be looking at brand it branded integration. And so we will work with the filmmakers and the producers. We'll tighten up their pitch. We'll create the packaging and then we will promote or we'll present it to the brands. And if they like it, then we'll make the connection and we'll all sit on a zoom call and start to collaborate together. Right. Yeah, that's, I mean, even that insight of, of being able to speak the brand language and understand what budgets are yeah. um, for brands is, 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 I mean, that's, you know, that, that's the, uh, I hate to, I hate this term, but <laughs> that's the secret sauce of, of being able to just go walk into meetings and understand, 
you know, how to approach those situations. And I feel like that's where a lot of um, creatives in general can get lost of, you know, I don't really know how to speak that language, um, approach brands. I don't even really know what their budgets are. Um, so I don't know what my value is. So I think that that's, you know, that's great that, you know, you're able to, to, to be a representative of a piece of content and help, you know, um, artists one, get their, you know, visuals and their, their content out there, but also be able to connect with brands, you know, to have a meaningful experience. Right. And, you know, and hopefully everyone, you know, is able to, to get resources from it and have success. Um, you know, it, I'm, I'm, I've been so uh, stimulated with all the marketing conversations here at South by it's, it's, it's a lot of fun to talk to you about this uh, for someone who's, you know, had 20 years or 25 years in, in the industry. Um, can, can you talk just about what, what's next for industry or what, what, what are you really focusing on, you know, at this current time? Yeah, we're so, so excited, Daniel, because we were a mobile app for three right. years and right. we were in beta. And even me, I'm, I'm a marketer, but I've never been in, in the media or technology space. And as a mobile mm-hmm. app, it was very frustrating because the whole point was, please download our app to see all this content. And, but mm-hmm. anyway, it was a challenge. And then the pandemic hit. But what we did realize during our beta was we understood much better about what kind of content we wanted to deliver or I should say what our consumers wanted to see um, and who we really serve in the, in the, in the market. Um, So uh, long story short, what we did during the pandemic was we just went back to basics and we said, okay, who are we? How are we going to stand out in this very uh, crowded market? How are we going to deliver what audiences um, and frankly creators want to, to see um, and, and how do we find our value proposition? And so we spent a year lining up the partnerships that we needed. And um, shortly, probably by next week, we will be launching industry now into 30 million homes um, with our digital streaming uh, FAST channel, which is um, an acronym for fa- uh, um, free ad supported uh, digital TV. And so we will be in 30 million smart TVs um, online um, across the world, as well as um, uh, our metaverse. Our metaverse will be launching sometime next month, which is going to take this branded experience to a whole new level. And yeah. um, and we're very excited about that. And, and we're going to be able to reach uh, about 300 million eyeballs by the end of this year. Well, first of all, congratulations. I mean, that Thank that in itself is a is a, a massive uh, success, and you know I know you've been working really hard on you know one just navigating the current industry, but even the fact that you had to shift from let's develop yes. this app. Okay, you know what this is not working. Right. You know we've learned a lot, but now we're gonna you know we're gonna actually go over here. Um, so you know that 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 in itself is 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 awesome. So I, I'm I'm so happy for for you and for industry. Um, you know, so, so just to, to kind of end the conversation, can you talk about um, the shift, right, of just being yeah. able to be like, you know, let's pull back what worked and what didn't? Because, I, you know, I think that is such an important skill as an entrepreneur is how to like, you know, seeing, OK, this this is not working or th- the model is not quite there. You know, you understood your audience from this process, you understood the content that worked, you know, and, and just talk about that pivot. And yeah. now you're going to be in 30 million you know, and, and, yes. and the pivot worked. Yes. <laughs> it worked. Yes. So we're, yeah, the pivot was huge. Right. And I think the pandemic really did force many companies. I'm sure you're speaking with many entrepreneurs about this. Everybody had to pivot. Yeah. Um, and for us, it was a very humbling experience. Um, you know, you go into starting a company with all of these, you know, you have this vision and, 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 you know, I, I brought in a lot of experience into this vision. Um, but it's, it's, it's a very humbling experience when, especially when the world just closes down and you're like, what do I do now? Um, and I'm sure a lot of, uh, entrepreneurs experience that. We took what we knew from the four or three years of uh, the beta testing. What didn't work was this mobile app, like I said earlier. 
What didn't work was that we were, everybody was creating a mobile app and everybody, it's like, the, you know, understanding the behavior when, when you're in literally a crowded space, it's like how, not just how do I stand out, but how do I get to under, how do I get people to understand what our mission is as a company? Mm -hmm. You know, what are we here for? And we truly have a purpose to be here. We are changing the game um, and really putting the creator at the center of this ecosystem versus on the peripheral. We're really about empowering the creatives and, and empowering them and really bringing forth their, bringing their stories and their ideas to life because that is truly the, the asset in the entertainment space, which a lot of you know, companies don't realize is the asset really is that creative person that created that content or music, mm -hmm. right? So um, what we had to do was step back and realize, okay, what, what, what are we, if it's not a mobile app and what, what happens in, you know, when you're a mobile app is you become a tech company. And we did not want to be a tech company. We wanted yeah. it to be about the media and about creating that media and delivering that media. So, um, so we've been fortunate enough to, you know, build our network, which I would always tell uh, other entrepreneurs is, is, you know, be very open minded and stay true to your mission and don't try to be everything. Let other people join the journey with you. Mm. Because other people have strengths that you don't. And my strength was the branding, the marketing, the, the vision of what industry, the purpose of industry. But I not from the tech world. We are not, you know, from the entertainment space. So we surrounded ourselves with people smarter than ourselves to help us build this thing. That is how we are able to serve the world and serve this, this industry, really. Um, and so uh, we, we had to realize, okay, as an entrepreneur, like my vision, it's not working this way. I'm going to just be very humble and realize what mm -hmm. am I good at? Yeah. And what am I not good at? And let me let me find the people that's going to help me build this thing. And 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 that's what we did. And here we are. Yeah. And I th I think you know you and a lot of other people the tech part of it can be really challenging um, and expensive. And in yes. terms of how to you know okay great I have an awesome piece of tech I need this updated because the whole world changed again. Exactly. So, you know, are you on a retainer? Am I going to have to, you know, can I afford a, a CTO, you know, to, to, to manage, uh, you know, all of that? Um, I, I listened to a great talk by Ghazi, who is uh, the founder of Empire Records. And I mean, you know, he's an incredible marketer. I mean, it was an amazing talk. But he, he talked about how, you know, everyone was asking these different questions and he's like, 70% of my work is, is the fundamentals of what we do. Like, and, and every artist that comes through, everything that I do is 70% my fundamentals. And the 30% is, is, is to adapt to the market if I need to be. But I always have to have this 70% of like, you know, I put, this is what we do with the artist. We make a music video. Like there's a whole, there's a whole path of, of, of what we, our brand is. And the other 30% is, you know, different ideas to adapt and, and, and reach audiences. Um, and it's similar yeah. to what you're saying. Of Exactly. And we, we did the same. We spent, we wait, I don't want to say we wasted a lot of money, but we wasted a lot of money and time and effort. And we realized we didn't want to be a tech company. Yeah. We can't serve. Yeah. We can't serve who we're trying to serve the artists, the creators um, and our, and their fans. We can't do that job really well being bogged down by technology. So yeah. 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 I guess. Yeah, it. it's yeah, it's it's um it's great. Well well Mary, this has been an awesome conversation. Um and I really appreciate you taking the time uh to talk with, with me today and and you know we're we're grateful that you're a part of the ecosystem. Thank and you. again, you know, I'm just gonna let everyone know um if you look below, so it's industrymedia.com. Um obviously, you know big news uh, for this year and we're, we're very excited for them. Um, check out what they're doing. I think it's important to, you know, entrepreneurs and creatives out there to know that there are companies like industry that are putting them at the center of, of the ecosystem. 
um, and, and not the periphery and, and really focusing on how to, you know, build sustainable careers, um, you know, for creative people. So um, again, Mary, thank you so much for, uh, you know, talking with me today and, you know, thank hopefully you. We, can, we can hang out soon. Yeah, no, thank you for having me, Daniel. I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, we'll see each other soon again. Yeah, awesome. Well, there you have it, everyone. Uh, Mary Landaverdi from uh, Industry Media. Uh, fantastic conversation. She's an expert in branding and marketing. Um, they just had major successes with with basically going you know worldwide and entering smart TVs. I mean, it, it's really incredible watching you know how she had to pivot the company and the success that that they're having now. Um, you know, again, my name is Daniel Crane. I'm the program director for the Center for Creative Entrepreneurship. If you go to CCE Global. Dot org, uh, you can see kind of the work that we're doing. We are focused in supporting the the entrepreneur, right? The creative industries. How can we make this this industry better? How do we put, as Mary has put, the creative first, right? How do we put them at the center um, and equip them with the right tools and the right networks for success? Um, and you know, it, it's been really great talking with everyone uh, each week and learning kind of what you know they're building and and they're doing. So I I hope everyone has a great rest of the week. Uh, take care and we will uh, talk to you soon.